Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyya al-azim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-mustafa muhammad. وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف We continue our discussion about adab about courtesy and politeness and good manners We have few hadith Actually, there are several hadiths from Amir al-Mu'min salam in which he considers adab or courtesy or good manners to be as important as the position that one may have because of family and social connections. To belong to a very good family is very important. Your nasab, who are your parents, your four parents, is very important. Your hasab, the relation which is not blood relation, but for example, whom you are married to, your social position is very important. But in this hadith, Amir al Mu'manin says, Adab is even more important than such family social relations. In one hadith, Amir al Mu'manin is quoted as saying, Al Adabu. Ahadul Hasabain Hasab and Nasab in Arabic views. Nasab is for your genealogy, your blood relation, and Hasab, as I said, family social relation. He says Adab is like one of these two. In another hadith, he says Ashrafu Hasabin. Husnu adab. Not only it's one of the two types of relations, it's the best. Because imagine if you are from a very good family background, but you are a rude person, impolite, disrespectful. Your family relation is not going to help you. If someone is like son of Nuh, what is this going to do for him? Your father can be a very good person, your mother can be a very good person, your uncles, your cousins, but what about you yourself? Do you match them or you are different? If you belong even to a bad family, but you yourself are good, people would respect you. But if you belong to a good family and you are a bad person, people would not respect you just because of your good family. So in one hadith he says, Ashrafu Hasabin Husnu Adab. In another hadith he says, Akramu Hasabin, the most honorable family social relation is goodness of manners. In one hadith, he says, Husnu al-adab afdalu nasabin wa ashrafu sababin. Is the best relation that you can have and the most honorable connection that you can have. And there are actually many hadiths about this. And I just mentioned some of them. The other issue that we have in our hadith 
is that adab is a kind of beautification, a kind of adornment, a kind of decoration. If you are a good person, as we said in the first night, you have faith, you have lots of good things, but you don't have good adab. You don't have these delicate ways of dealing with people in different circumstances. No one would have interest in you, even if in your substance, in your essence, you are good. Imagine if there is a shopkeeper who has good products. What he sells is good. Quality is good. Price is good, but he is very rude and impolite. He doesn't show respect to his customers. He makes mockery of them, or he shouts at them, or uses bad language. No one is going to buy from him. Although there is essence, but there is no beautification. There is no good outfit, like a person who may be fit, but has very dirty dress on. No one wants to sit with someone who has a dirty dress on. So adab is, as we have in several hadiths, hulla. Hulla means a dress of honor. In the past, you know, this was very common that kings in some festives, in some celebrations, they used to give some dresses of honor to the people that they love for their loyalty, for their services. That is hulla. Amir al muminin says, Al-adabu hullalun judud. Courtesy is like dresses of honor which are new, very new. In another hadith, he says, Zinatukum al adab. Adornment for you is adab. In another hadith, he says, La hulala kal adab. There are no dresses of honor like good manners. La zinata kal adab. There is no adornment like good etiquettes. We have also reference to opposite, and that is su ul adab. If someone has very impolite, improper manners. Amir al Mu'mini said, La sharafa ma'asu e adab. If someone has bad manners, if someone is impolite, there is no honor for him or her. If you have the best of qualifications. If you have, I don't know, PhD from top universities, but you are rude. You don't know how to deal with people. You don't know how to sit, how to stand up, how to socialize, how to buy, how to sell, how to visit people, how to welcome your host, your guests. People would not bother whether you have PhD or you have nothing. La sharafa, there is no honor with su al adab, with bad manners. In another hadith, Amir al Mu'minin says, and as I said yesterday, it seems that Amir al Mu'minin was very concerned about this issue, and he has tens of hadith about adab. Man qalla adabu kathurat masawi. Allah Metabatabai has 
a very beautiful definition of adab. Inshallah, I will talk about definition of adab later because I want you to first be familiar with this concept. Then we would have, inshallah, a stop, a pause to reflect on the concept and definition. But just briefly, I refer to what Allama Tabatabai says. Allama Tabatabai says that adab is a kind of delicate attitude in your behavior. You know, you have to be very careful. You know, people, depending on how much they give value to what they do, they can be careful or careless. Let me give you a kind of simple example. Imagine I am a person who sells gold, or I am a person who sells, for example, soil. You know, people come and buy from me soil, for example, for construction. One lorry, two lorries of soil. When I sell soil or buy soil, one kilogram, ten kilogram is not important. I can be careless with kilograms, let alone with grams. But when I am selling or buying gold, not only gram, even milligram is important. So now me and you as a human beings, when we deal with people, do we consider our relation with people as gold and silver or we consider as a soil and brick and, I don't know, plaster? How delicate you are. If you know that this person that sits next to you in masjid, for example, is a servant of Allah, and you have to have maximum respect to any servant of Allah, then a word that comes from your mouth is important, because it can be a gold to give him comfort, to make him happy. This person may have many problems, has come to Masjid for a time of reflection, for a time of getting some spiritual energy. I can make this a good experience for him or her, or I can make him even suffer in Masjid and go out feeling bad. It's up to me. So if I have value for myself, if I have value for that person, everything that I do, I consider it as gold. Every opportunity is gold. I can gain a lot. I can give him a lot. But if I am careless, I can say tens of words even without thinking. I can spend minutes or hours next to my friend or my brother and sister without caring anything. This mentality is not good. So, Allama Tabatabai says, Adab is to be very delicate, considerate, and careful about our behavior. This is Adab. For everything, you are very careful. So, if someone is not careful, man qalla adabuhu, he is not very polite, kathurat masawi, then he would have lots of bad actions. Why? Because we are living together. Every day we meet tens of people, if not more. Every day there are lots of interactions. If I am not careful, 
I just keep doing wrong after another. I hurt this person. In home, I hurt my family. I go outside, I hurt my colleagues, my clients. I keep hurting people, annoying people. If I don't have good adab with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even my relation would, with Allah would be affected. Inshallah, if we get chance, we talk about how we should have adab with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who is not careful, kathurat masawi, his bad actions and wrong, wrong actions would increase. In another hadith, Amir al Mu'mini alayhi salam says, Man wada'ahu dana'atu adabihi lam yarfa'ahu sharafu hasabihi. If someone is brought down because of his or her bad adab, bad behavior, bad manners, his social family position cannot elevate him or her if my adab brings me down nothing else can raise me in another hadith which is my last hadith for today amirul mu'minin alayhi salam says Annafsu majbulatun ala su'il adab. Human soul by birth is not coming with good adab. Adab is something that needs education, needs discipline. It's not that when a child is born, knows how to deal with people. A child when is born has tendency do towards good behavior, moral behavior, but doesn't have the etiquettes and manners. These are two separate things, as I said in the first night. Husnul khulq is something, husnul adab is something extra. So a child by birth doesn't have adab, doesn't know the manners, doesn't know the etiquettes, doesn't know how should to respect elders, for example, how should respect neighbors, how should respect teachers, how should he behave when he goes to masjid, when he goes to a public place. Who is supposed to teach the child? Parents, teachers, yourself, you have to also educate yourself. I have to educate myself. We are not born with adab. We have to work hard to gain it. So Amir al Mu'mini says, An nafsu majbulatun ala su al adab. You are born without good manners and you are asked to achieve good manners. It's an obligation for you to get, to acquire, to obtain this adab politeness courtesy good manners so there is here now a problem our nafs is somehow used to act freely unfortunately especially today we hear many people encourage us do what you want enjoy yourself you want to stretch your leg in front of your father or elders or other people without having any physical problem do it 
You want to go with improper dress to home you, in front of your parents, your sister, your brother, do it. You go to, I don't know, playground, you want to take shower nakedly, no problem, do it. Unfortunately, this is the way people consider adab. And our nafs also lacks adab by birth. We have to work hard to gain adab. So now there is a little bit of fight here, a little bit of a struggle here. Nafs, and perhaps in some places, the culture which comes from certain platforms and media is telling you to be free. Don't bother about your behavior, but religion, morality, good humanity says you have to be different. You are not just an animal. You have to have human value. The way you behave towards others has to have manners and etiquettes and has to be very measured, very balanced. So Amir al Mumani says, وَالنَّفْسُ تَجْرِي فِي مَيْدَانِ الْمُخَالَفَةِ In this conflict between your nafs and your moral and religious sense of responsibility, there is a conflict. Nafs wants to go to its own, her own direction like a wild horse. It's difficult to tame. Nafs wants to be just comfortable, wants to be free, wants to enjoy herself. Why I should limit myself by observing etiquettes and manners? But a servant of Allah who has deep sense of moral responsibility would try to stop his nafs from acting carelessly and freely. If this untamed and wild horse is left free and runs away, and hurts other people and hurts yourself you are responsible you didn't discipline you didn't educate your nafs you didn't give good akhlaq good manners good etiquette to your nafs you are responsible and if you help your nafs amare against yourself and destroy in this process, you are partner with your nafs in killing and destroying yourself. So see, it's a serious issue. So my request is that we all, no matter what is our age, what is our role, what is our background, we should seriously think about adab in every aspect of our behavior. I am sure there is always opportunity to improve. Alhamdulillah, there are many people who are very polite, very respectful. They treat others with maximum respect, but we can always improve. I want to reach, inshallah, a situation in which people would point at followers of Ahlul Bayt and say, these are the most polite people. These are the most respectful people. These are the people that whether they know you or not, you would not see anything improper from them coming to you. No improper word, no improper proper behavior. This is where, inshallah, we should reach.